Definitely. My co-host. The learning curve continues. Okay. So, here we go. Welcome to the Cape Elizabeth School Board to uh, regular business meeting, Tuesday, November 10th, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom. I just wanna review the strategic plan goals. I'm not gonna go into detail, but just health and well-being, global competency, multiple pathways and definitions of success, safe, sustainable and effective facilities and environmental responsibility. These are goals that through a future search um, process with community members, we uh, whittled down to coming up with these five goals that are for the next five years. We are in our first or sec second year of it. Um, roll call is Heather Altenberg is here. Kimberly Carr. I am here and I always have my um, video off because my Wi-Fi does not support these meetings with my uh, video on. So just an FYI. Thank you. Phil Saucier. Here. Elizabeth Seifries. Here. Nasser Shear. Not quite here yet. Uh, Hope Straw. Here. And Laura Danino. She'll be absent this evening as well. Okay, if we could have the flag, Jen, for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, United of, America, States of America, to the republic, to the republic which, is stand, which is stands, one nation, one nation under God, indivisible, indivisible liberty and justice, and justice for all. For all. Thank you, Jen. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? And see no adjustments. May I have a motion for approval of minutes October 13th, 2020. I move that we approve minutes October 2020. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Phil. Any discussion or questions or comments on it? Okay, Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr? A yay. Phil Saucier? Yay. Elizabeth Seifries? Yay. Is Nasser here yet? Nope. Okay, Hope Straw. Yay. And Laura is not here. Are there any, before we head into the review or comments from the public on the agenda, um, I just wanna review our policy that comments are based on the agenda. Um, we give a time slot of 20 minutes so that we can get through the business that needs to be uh, completed in the meeting. Uh, and if members of the community can limit it to three minutes per person, that would be great. So I'm going to move over to attendees. If you can raise your hand, um, your virtual hand. I see, I'm not sure what the name is. Shadamir? Uh, is that you may um, do I have to I have to un allow to talk. There we go. You should be able to unmute yourself and start speaking. It is Sean, Sean Tamir. Sean Tamir. Thank you. My apologies. Thank you. Um, you have the floor to speak for three minutes. 
Well, thank you. Uh, this is my first time joining uh, the board meeting. Uh, I am, um, I was impressed with the Pledge of Allegiance. And my first question is why had it stopped at the middle school? So I'm gonna actually preface this. Um, that leads me to a question. These comment times are not times for back and forth conversation. Um, I should have mentioned that before, Sean. They are opportunities for uh, members of the community to comment and to speak. Um, and we do take in the information and hear the opinions. My recommendation um, is to reach out to your principal in the, the middle school. If you have for that particular question. If you have other comments about what's on the agenda, we'd be happy to hear you. Well, that's very kind of you. I took notice and I will, um, I will take it uh, further appropriately. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for asking the question and for showing up. I appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Yep. Are there any other comments? Okay, I'm not seeing any comments. So our student representatives, we have Ellie and Joey, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having us. Um, okay, so First, we're gonna start with a uh, club and organization report. So Joey will begin. So the main report I have for uh, this meeting is that the speech and debate team has held its first virtual competition. And that's a really good opportunity for our students to uh, learn their skills whilst not being impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. So we, uh, look at these competitions as a great opportunity and hope that they will continue in the future. Okay, and then I was gonna add that the Junior Student Council is continuing to discuss our upcoming Spirit Week and the best way to go about it. We also had a meeting with the woman at our prom venue, The Landing, and we'll hopefully be touring that sometime soon. Um, lastly, we have talked about prom being outside if need be and are discussing ways we could possibly do it at Fort Williams. And then the senior student council wanted me to say that they're working on a fundraising, on fundraising ideas, and they're trying to do a candle fundraiser. Along with that, they're thinking of doing some activities such as a class ice skating trip or skiing this winter. Um, some achievements to be noted are that the boys and girls soccer team just wrapped up their season. And I know the girls had a banquet on Sunday and the boys, I'm not sure yet. The football team had their last game on Monday night versus Freeport and field hockey just wrapped up their season and are planning on doing their banquet next week. And then Joey's going to talk about some academic topics going on right now. In terms of academic topics, uh, senior grades are due at on November 20th. So seniors are waiting to get those final grades in for their early action schools. And I just want to extend a thank you on behalf of the students to all the staff, the board, every member of the school that has made this academic year possible and allowed us to uh, continue our learning at the highest levels uh, that Cape Elizabeth allows. So I wanted to extend that on behalf of the Cape Elizabeth student body. Also, um, I the general consensus from people was about Wednesdays was to keep them and not extend the length of school days still. I think I mentioned that last meeting, but um, I talked more to some students and they were like, they just tell me to keep emphasizing on it. So I'm going to. Um, and another overall consensus I've gotten is that the transition into the new mini term was actually pretty smooth and not many people had issues. With new classes, some people's schedules got easier and some people's schedules became more extreme. But overall, it was nothing that couldn't be handled, and everyone was presently, pleasantly surprised. And Joey's going to talk about some student life uh, going on right now. So in terms of student life, I do have one concern on behalf of the student body is the redesignation of storm days to academic learning days. Uh, some of the students are concerned that if they're not able to connect, they may, be fall, they may fall behind 
in their academic classes. So any information that the board or school administration could relay uh, to that effect would be um, much appreciated. Social distancing and the utilization of safety procedures are also paramount to the student body and we will continue to use them. Uh, we also thank the uh, staff for maintaining a COVID free uh, high school and a real shout out to everyone who's made that uh, achievement possible. So with that, uh, we'll conclude our student report, our first student report, and we will uh, be back to report more stuff next uh, school board meeting. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. It really is a pleasure having students come and tell us about the life in the high school. It's very much appreciated. Thank you so much. We have our principals up next. Jason, how about you? I am always happy to start. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Um, excuse me, I wanted to spend my time tonight uh, talking particularly about Wednesdays, <clears throat> excuse me, the Wednesdays in our schedule. And it was, uh, it's nice to hear uh, Ellie and Joey um, mentioning that the students um, are valuing Wednesdays um, as well, and I can assure you that um, our teachers value them. And so I, I wanted just to talk a little bit about, um, just for a minute, about kind of what we're doing on Wednesdays, because it is um, consensus across, and I speak for Pond Cove, but consensus across the building that Wednesdays are among our very busiest days. Um, and I know um, it's, it's, all, it's kind of counterintuitive, but even as, as an administrator, I'm finding that too, that um, we, because um, we are doing so many things differently, um, we're needing to pack so much into Wednesday. So um, I want to thank the board and the community for supporting our current schedule um, and just share a few details about um, how staff are using uh, at Pond Cove are using Wednesdays. So uh, I just would love um, just to start by saying, uh, reminding everyone that um, you know, our, our staff, our teachers and our support staff are working tirelessly to, they've had to develop new curriculums. Um, they've had to learn new technology uh, and teach in ways that they never had even imagined they would. Um, all, uh, you know, it, it's just, it's really, it is overwhelming. And um, we're doing everything we can to support them, um, but there's only so much that we can do. And we're all, we're all here for the kids, um, but we're hoping that, um, you know, we can continue to find ways to make um, the, the, uh, te the workload uh, sustainable for our staff as well. So just to name a few things, I had conversations with my staff and surveyed my staff um, just to kind of confirm and learn more about what they're doing on Wednesdays. And I'm only going to read a few because the, the list is very long, but we have, you know, examples of um, staff, some staff are support staff and specialists providing direct instruction on Wednesdays. Uh, teachers are providing student support on Wednesdays, parent and guardian support they're providing. Uh, lots of IEP meetings on Wednesdays because uh, there is not just, there isn't time to do them in, in the schedule during um, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, team and department meetings, uh, district level professional development, building level professional development. Uh, our special educators are, um, they're just really going above and beyond. Um, they're, they're having to, to meet the requirements and they're writing a lot of their reports on Wednesdays, meeting with regular ed teachers on Wednesdays. And uh, our guidance department has come up with a way to um, have fully remote students and gold and maroon students. There are opportunities for those students to come together live via Zoom and interact, which would not be possible without a day like Wednesday. Uh, so I just want to, um, you know, I want to thank you folks for um, their support in, in um, supporting us in, in maintaining the schedule that we have now. And that's really all I wanted to share tonight. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jason. I'm glad that those days um, on Wednesdays are, are useful. And I really appreciate the communication because I think for some people it can seem like what's going on? How, how is that being utilized? And it sounds like it is being utilized tremendously well. So thank you for sharing that. Yes. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Troy. Hi. So, yep, I think I can kind of agree with everything Jason just said about Wednesdays. Um, I too wanted to just kind of quickly say what was happening at the middle school on those days. Um, and I did put something out to staff. We talked about it at staff meeting. And um, I have since just gone around and kind of informally talked to people about it. And there's really a variety of things that happen on Wednesdays. And I, and I think that's, you know, the feeling from the parent perspective, I'm sure is different depending on your child and, and how they're, what work they're doing on the Wednesdays. But we have, as Jason said, a wide range from, um, <clears throat> because the week is so intense with the two days that kids are there. And I know that seems kind of counterintuitive that having eight to 12 kids in your room is more intense than having 24, but you are, you know, you're taking them outside for mass breaks, you're wiping down desks and it's just a different feel to being a teacher in our, in our school right now. And it's much more, I think, stressful, um, which would seem kind of weird with having fewer kids in the building. But I think the sense of ownership and responsibility is just, it's just much, much greater. Also, there's a lot more pressure to get through things when you see kids in person only two days a week. So that pressure to get through and continue to move, um, I think is, is greater. So, so there is that pressure. All of our parents um, that we have talked to, also kind of a lot of the survey results that we got out were kind of mixed along what Wednesdays were, were, how they were working for their students. And for some things, many of our teachers are scheduling office hours in the morning where they are requesting students to come in and work with them or students or parents could request to meet with the teachers during that time. The other big part of, the, of this is the support services. So our student support team would usually be grabbing students that needed help in math or reading and working with them when students are there during the week. However, with time being so limited, they are now using their Wednesdays for that and preserving the in-class time for students, um, much like some of our special education services um, in, and even our enrichment services with GT, some of that's happening. So those things are happening. If a student was gonna meet with a guidance counselor or social worker, that also is happening on Wednesdays on a, on a pretty rigid you know, um, schedule again, in an attempt to um, stop, prevent, or at least limit the amount of pullout time on the days that kids are in our school um, with their teachers face-to-face. -face. So there's an incredible amount of those types of things that are happening for kids during that time that are, that are critically important for them. And if that time wasn't there for them, they'd be being pulled out of their regular class time to get that service. So, so there's a lot of those things that are really crucial. Um, another thing that I don't know that it, I don't know that there's a correlation directly or not, but I've been so impressed with our staff attendance at school and because I was really worried about the need for substitute teachers and is there gonna be enough and how are we gonna manage this and with the new expectations and regs around if you're not feeling well and staying home and where would that put us? And knock on wood, I've got no wood here with me, but um, I'll do it. And knock on wood, to this point, it's, we've really been really successful at, at getting substitutes. I think the community is, is actively coming in to try and we've had been signing up new subs as a result of, I think the community wanting this to work. Um, and largely, I do believe that having that Wednesday in the middle of the week helps that. Um, and it helps make sure that teachers have the ability to connect with each other because during the day, they're not connecting with each other like they would in the past. So my social studies teachers are not finding that social studies support anywhere else except for on that Wednesdays and same for math and language arts and so when I talk to them they're like yeah that that is like such an important part of this that people need to remember is just that mental health um, piece and so I just I kind of it's kind of anecdotal I don't really know I just I really feel like there has to be some connection to that um, and then just lastly all the meetings team meetings and you know that we have to have for kids and IEP meetings and 504 meetings all of those meetings if they were added on to Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, it would just be 
an incredible lo- lift, I think, for teachers compared to being able to do some of that on Wednesday afternoons without having kids in front of them right then. Um, equally important work as some of the direct instruction and it's, I think sometimes it would be easy to overlook all of that, that time. So um, I totally agree with Jason. I think that for our teachers, it's one of the, probably the most busy time of the week for them, but it's a time that I think they can work with kids in a very much more of a one-on-one way that they currently struggle to do um, with some of the restrictions around social distancing and, and getting up to them. And, and they get to support each other. And it's really hard to develop a school community right now for our kids and as well for our staff because of the distancing and, and the potting and all of that. It just, it's a very kind of clunky feel at times. So that Wednesday community time has really been helpful, I believe, for, for us. And the last pitch is some of our remote learning students, you know, they have started to meet on Wednesdays at like Fort Williams where it's outside, they can socially distance. It gives them a chance to see some of their peers with their teachers. So some of those unique kind of opportunities like that are also happening on Wednesdays. Um, so I, I hope that makes sense. And, and I just, I can't support Wednesdays anymore. You know, it's, it's crucial for us. And then lastly, the, the flag salute um, in the mornings, we have kind of been off the, off our game a little bit, just in general with trying to get the kids all in. And, and I would say in the last two weeks, there's been an effort to start to, more formally do morning announcements and more formally in the pledges part of that. So I think that that's something that we're gonna see, you know, continuing from now on, but it was missing in the beginning. Any questions? Thanks. Sorry, I have a, I have a question about um, what you just mentioned about Wednesdays with remote learners and their teacher meeting in, Fort Williams. Um, my only, con- I think it's fabulous. I love the idea. Um, my concern is, are, are we sure that all students in that remote class can get there? And that, yeah, I just wanna make sure that's equitable in the sense, you know, there, there's yeah. not a bus service taking them or bringing them to school. It's a different modality, um, so. Yeah, and I, I believe that they've worked on that and talked with it. Um, because a lot of our remote learners are working kind of with other remote kids, neighbors, you know, friends. So to my knowledge, that hasn't been an issue. It's hundred percent optional. Some people are not comfortable doing it. That's fine. Um, it's yeah. just an opportunity to try. It's not a graded activity. It's nothing like that. It's an outing um, in an attempt to get those kids to provide them with a little opportunity to be together and actually see their teachers. Um, so that, that is kind of the, that's kind of the gist of it. Thanks for explaining that more. Um, I think it's important to know that it's not graded, that it's an yeah. opportunity to just connect and, you know, a shout out to those teachers taking that extra effort to, to provide that. Thank you to them. Yep. Any other questions from the board? Thank you, Troy. Jeff. Hello. Um, so I'm going to echo much of what Jason and Troy have said, and maybe add a few more details specific to the high school. Um, so, and I wanted one of the things I did want to echo is is Jason th- Jason's thanks to the board uh, for being supportive of this time. It is different. It is um, as as is just about everything else about this school year different. Um, and I do think it's a it's an important difference to sort of support the structure of what we're trying to do. So in addition to um, talking about Wednesdays, I want to add just a couple comments about our Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday support time at the end of the at the end of those days as well, because we have an hour at the end of the day. Um, and I just want to put it in this context. About eight or nine years ago, I don't remember how long ago it was, we decided to innovate with our school schedule and create a student support time in the middle of the day. Um, and with the passing time before and after that period, that essentially consumed about 40, well, it consumed exactly 40 minutes of our school day every single day. So, so we called it the achievement period. Um, and I'm sort of wishing that I had called the last hour of the day um, the achievement period, and people would have understood what the purpose was. It was really designed to do the same thing the achievement period does to create a time within the school day when all teachers and all students are free 
So therefore there's an ease of connecting with students who need some additional time and support. Wednesdays does the same thing. It's an add on to that period, but the last hour of the day at the high school is really just a very slightly extended achievement period in anticipation of the fact that we likely will, and we have had more students needing support in the hybrid model and with some 100% fully remote than we would if we were in school all day. Um, so I wanted to make that point, number one. Number two, I wanna, so I wanna make a point that my guess is that Dell will um, sort of echo this point <laughs> when, when he speaks to you as well, and that is this. Um, if we were to do away with the, uh, the hour achievement period at the end of the day, and the Wednesday morning time for additional support, we would likely have to completely undo our schedule and, and drop the mini term schedule instead of in, 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 and put something different in its place. And the reason for that is that those support times for students are vital for special educators to provide the IE, IEP required amount of support uh, that they're required to provide during the off mini terms when that support isn't embedded within the student's school day schedule. Um, so the two things are really pretty intricate, intricately linked. Um, and I, again, I do suspect that Del may, Del may echo that a little bit. Um, I will repeat what Jason and uh, Troy said, because I think it's true at the high school as well. This uh, last, well, today, I went and I just sat down. It was it was fun to have conversations with about a third of the rate of the, the teachers in the high school from a whole variety of disciplines just to say, what do you do on Wednesdays? What's going on? And to a person, what they said, one message that they said, tell the board that they are our most packed day um, from 7.55 in the morning until five o'clock at night, some people said they are our most packed day. And it's with all the meetings and, all, and there are certainly IEPs um, at the high school as well, departmental meetings, support meetings with students. I did ask teachers to give me some examples of sort of the kind of support that they're providing to students on Wednesday morning. Um, so I had one teacher who said that actually this afternoon or tomorrow, no, hold it. No, this was, con this was concerning the extended achievement period at the end of the day. This afternoon, she had, a, she had a, a review session for all the kids in her class. It was an optional review session for a test that's coming up in her class on Thursday. Um, and because it's built within the school day, and even Wednesday mornings are built within the school day, and a typical, she's offered similar sessions on Wednesday mornings as well. It's a great opportunity for kids to actually get some additional support that a whole group of kids at the same time need. Um, special educators are, have scheduled into that last hour of the day and Wednesdays um, actual scheduled time that appears in the students' school schedules uh, because, because it's, it, as I said, it's, it's time that's required for the students to get the support that they need under their IEPs. Um, I've had an English teacher who said she is every single Wednesday meeting with several seniors to do writing conferences, particularly connected with college essays, uh, because the teachers were not able to do quite as much with college essays last spring in the remote setting. So she said that she has been, since the beginning of the year, she's been meeting with multiple kids every single Wednesday to go over to help them with their college essays. Um, our, the, I had a, I, there was a small group of math teachers who were together, so I asked them how many kids are they typically seeing, and they said on the on the Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday afternoon, at least three days a week, they're seeing between three and five kids who are scheduled into time with them. Um, some of the and the same thing is true on Wednesdays. Some of the teachers reminded me that actually at various student accommodations meetings, whether IEPs or 504 meetings, we have actually made accommodations to say that students, certain students who are struggling the most will be scheduled for a specific time. This is beyond IEP students, but the, they will be scheduled once a week to see their social studies teacher, to see their math teacher, to see their science teacher. And so that's a regular weekly meeting and it's a vital support for some kids. Um, 
And so, so I will say that they are, the, the support time part of it is being heavily utilized. I think uh, J uh, Jason and Troy talked about all the sort of the professional meetings that are happening as well. Um, and I will say that in terms of student support, and I, and I sent a letter out to the high school community yesterday, I think it was, about a new claiming system. Um, that new claiming system is now available to all teachers. We started that yesterday. Um, and I'm very confident that as more and more teachers start to experiment with that, um, that it will become more apparent to more parents um, that teachers are well utilizing the Wednesdays and that extra hour and that hour at the end of the day, which I'm going to start calling the achievement period. It's just in a different time. Uh, because one of the nice things about that claiming system, and we used to use it in the old achievement period, was that parents were emailed when teachers claimed a student for some additional support time. Um, that had been missing this year because we just, we were scrambling with a lot of things. Um, and so with the help of Dean Zaharis, who is one of the hidden gems of the Cape Elizabeth School District, we were, he was able to create a claiming system that is more flexible and tailored to the, to the variety of support times that we have available now. Um, all right, so, so the other part I wanted to mention is putting the student support time in the context of the demands that teachers are facing and what it takes to be a teacher. And Troy spoke to this a little bit and Jason spoke to this a little bit as well. But one of the things I talked to some veteran teachers today um, and one of the things they wanted, they, they said it's really hard for people who don't do it to understand is it, the teaching the way they're doing it now re, really requires new lesson plans um, from what teachers have traditionally done, new materials um, and that takes an awful lot of time. And the other thing they said that both, both parents and, and teachers and administrators would have a hard time, or students and administrators would have a hard time understanding is how grading takes a lot more time. Um, and the reason is, it used to be that what teachers would do, they'd say, pass up your homework, they put it into a file, this is what I would do. And then they would go through the file and then they would grade the homework and they quickly put check marks on it. Now, everything is collected through Google Classroom. Um, accessing it through Google Classroom, it's not complicated. It's a great, powerful tool, but it takes significantly more steps and clicks to actually get to the document than to comment on the document to make sure you don't screw it up. Um, and teachers are still learning some, some sort of... Uh, uh, traps along the way if they don't do the Google Classroom correcting exactly right. And the other thing is if students um, turn in work late, um, and there are some students who do turn in work late for legitimate and less legitimate reasons. In the past, teachers, like what I would do is I would take that late work and I'd stick it into the, a late work file, and then I would go through it and I would be very quick. Now what you have to do is you have to go through and identify in Google Classroom by looking at your classroom spreadsheet in the portal, who's missing things, and then go, go on a hunt for that, for that missing work. So it takes a lot longer um, than you would expect. And that's true even when teachers are teaching fewer classes right now than they typically do. Um, I wanted to share this one quote from one veteran teacher who's just a fabulous teacher. If I told you her name, you'd say, all of you would agree that by reputation, she is just a fabulous teacher. And she said, um, I've taught for 29 years. Um, this, is, this has been the hardest semester of my life. Um, and I think that's a sentiment that most teachers would agree with. I do also want to say this, um, closing out this part, and then I just have a couple of other things I want to quickly mention. Um, and that is that uh, the high, our high school last year was an outlier in the amount of asynchronous learning our, and asynchronous teaching our, our teachers were doing for students last spring. Our school continues to be an outlier in terms of um, the amount of asynchronous learning and teaching that teachers are doing every single day. It is not the typical approach that high schools are using. And I've talked to a whole bunch of principals in the area about what they're doing. It is not at all the norm for teachers in most schools 
to be teaching simultaneously concurrently online students in class and students at home four days a week. Um, that really is an outlier, which gives our kids a lot more contact time with teachers. You have to put that in the, into the factor of the mini term as well that affects that. But in terms of building relationships and in terms of instructional, total instructional time over the course of a year with teachers, our kids will be getting a lot more than is the case in many schools. Then I wanted to mention, totally different topic. Tomorrow was supposed to be the girls cross country state championships. Our girls cross country team was the number one team in Western Maine. Um, and it's, I'm not being critical of the state or the MPA. They made a, probably the right decision for right reasons to cancel it. But I wanted to give a shout out to the girls. They were supposed to run tomorrow. The boys cross country team was second in Western Maine and they were supposed to run on, on Saturday. Um, and that is not going to happen either. Uh, so tomorrow, after, tomorrow morning, Mr. Lupian on Veterans Day is taking all of his teams out, all of his runners out for a last 5K run, sort of bonding experience for the cross country teams who've been working so hard this year. Uh, really excited for them. Um, so the last piece I wanna say is we did have, as you know, two COVID cases associated with the high school. I'm not gonna get into details about it, but I will say this, that the mini terms were super helpful in terms of minimizing the number of people who had to quarantine away from school. Um, today we had um, 19 people come back to school after quarantining from that first case. Um, we would have had at least, probably at least twice that many if our model was slightly different. And the other thing that I wanted to mention is, I was amazed how Everybody, teachers in particular, staff wanted to have more information, wanted to have their questions answered, uh, but they listened to the answers, they listened to the approaches that people were taking and they stayed true to what they were doing and calm and that sort of thing. And I will say that that is true of Cape Woods with families as well. I was expecting to be inundated with emails uh, when that first case happened. And I got one email um, and I know Donna has mentioned something similar, I think getting are an incredibly small number of emails. So I, I knock, on, knock on wood and I do have wood next to me. Uh, hopefully we won't have another one for a while, but I was incredibly impressed with how resilient uh, the staff and families were in connection with those two cases. So again, I'd be happy to answer any questions too. Phil, go ahead. Yeah, thanks. I just want to mention, um, you know, appreciate hearing from all three principals about the Wednesdays. And I know Mr. Phillips mentioned it last time, and we've heard it a lot. I've heard anecdotally from some teachers, they were concerned about losing it. My question is, is, is where is this coming from? I, I support what we have. So I just want to say that for the record, I support where we are today. I, I think that um, from everything we just heard that we need the Wednesdays until we can figure this thing back out and get back to school after after this is all over. But I just want to make sure I'm not missing something. I've heard a lot about the Wednesday support and, and, and the buttressing, and I was personally reached out to about it. Seems like there's some concern, and maybe this is a time to put that to rest if there is no concern, um, uh, because I, I can tell you that for whatever reason, and I, it's going over my head, it's rippling a little bit in the community that there may be some change there. And so, and I, and I know we're hearing, so Donna, this is, yeah, so maybe you can put that so, yeah, I, I think we said that we would be looking, kind of doing some reflection at the end of October. And I think people jumped to conclusions that that meant we were going to make changes. And I think if we had found that we were, um, that we needed to make changes, we certainly would be recommending that to you. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. So, um, but I don't believe we're going to be making any recommendations for changes. So um, I, I just think it, people knew that um, parents and staff knew that we were just reflecting on things, so. Great, that's helpful, thank you. Kimberly has her hand raised. Go ahead, Kimberly. Thank you. Um, I, uh, uh, Mr. Shedd, thanks so much for the update on the end of the day um, achievement period. Um, I think there were a lot of questions about um, how that 
time is being used that I had heard. And I think um, I, I think the explanation you offered tonight is, uh, is very useful. So thank you for that. Um, and um, just a huge shout out to all the teachers. Appreciate all that you are all doing for our kids. Um, I have heard from quite a few families this year um, post conferences, um, just how blown away they are with the teachers that their kids um, are having in class. And um, they really appreciated the meetings and were just really impressed with the quality of the teachers and the caring um, and uh, what, you, what everyone is doing to, to make this year happen. So just thought I'd share that. Thank you. Hey, Heather, can I just add one more thing? Sure. Okay, because I totally got off track on the Wednesday thing and I dropped the ball, I fumbled on a celebration. So um, just really quickly, I, I have to give a shout out to not only Jill Young, but I think it's probably the Young family um, because seizing on the opportunity and the nice weather to do the yellow tulip planning in you know, recognition of, of the mental, of, you know, mental health awareness. Um, with all that is on all of our plates, but especially Jill's plate, you know, as one of our nurses, um, you know, they go in on the weekend, they drill 500 holes because the tulip bulbs finally came in. Kids come in there on Monday and they see balloons. They see like a festive greeting, which was really all done largely by Jill. And I think her husband and maybe her daughters were forced or just like to do that. I don't know, but um, and then throughout the day, today and yesterday, because everything now takes longer um, to get all your maroon kids, all of your gold kids, and to get your, um, high, you know, your remote kids in there, even if it's from picture taking to, to any of these events, and to just to know that, that something is important enough to keep it going and to make it anything we can do to make our school and our day more normal, whatever that means, um, I think is really commendable and important. So um, I, I felt really bad because I realized when Jeff said celebrations, like I knew that I needed to say that. But um, so just a quick shout out to her and how much we really appreciate that. Thank you so much for sharing that, Troy. And I think also just keeping the awareness of the mental health piece of things ongoing and in the conversation. Um, yeah. And thank you to Jill and her family. Definitely. Are there any other questions from the board for the three principals? All right, Marcy. Okay, good evening. Thank you, Heather. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to uh, bring up where we are in our annual timeline. You might remember this summer when we had our first meeting, I mentioned the timeline to describe the flow of the business office activities in the budget. And we are in the middle of the second quarter right now. And we are right on schedule with what we have been planning. We are beginning our budget process. So I'm very excited. I was just talking to Superintendent Wolf from yesterday that we're excited about starting the new process. The administrators have their worksheets. And we are in the full analysis now of the position control report to see how we're doing compared to what we budgeted and then for our future budgeting process to make sure everything's aligned, diving deep with that. And we are working on invoices for all of our federal grants. That's a huge, uh, huge thing right now on our plate. So that's, that's where we are with our timeline. And as far as our expenditures, for this period of time in the year, we would be at 33% spent. And the overall general fund categories are at 30%. So the average over the past five years for this time in the budget year has been 31%. So we're right on target with the average for the past five years. And for the last few months, the range has been a 3% range for every month compared to the normal percentage of the year. So we're right on track. And this is, we're now heading into the end of the second quarter. And this is the critical time where I will be watching everything pretty carefully because we'll be close to our six month mark. 
And that's when it gets to be that critical time of watching the line items and making sure everything is right, right on target. The one expenditure category, if you notice in your chart that will jump out at you for attention is called the other category, other expenditures, it's the final budget category that we have. And it is for school nutrition. And the uh, procedure that I will be doing every year is that as soon as property taxes are collected in full for the nutrition budget, I will be making that transfer 100% into the nutrition fund. So that's why you see the 100% jump on your graph and it does skew our, our view of the expenditures, but it makes sure that their fund is whole and it gives them a good picture of their funding sources as well. So I think it's just gonna be a good practice that I'll um, make sure that we follow. As soon as property taxes are collected, we give them the funds that are from property taxes. Let's see what else I wanted to mention that um, we're starting to really see the benefits and um, items are arriving from our grants from the CARES Act. So I, I'm hoping that students and teachers and administrators are starting to really feel some relief from some of the items that the federal government has provided us through the state. The technology is arriving. Um, we have our huge uh, ventilation project. We're, we're very excited. That is um, in the works and it is um, on target for completion. So we will have um, an upgraded ventilation system for the school's buildings, and we're very excited about that. So I just wanted to mention that that's some of the nice things that um, the federal government has provided for us to have a safe opening and uh, a, a, this providing for the hybrid model, the um, at-home model, synchronous learning, at all of it combined is just great. So I just wanted to bring that up. Okay, any questions? All right, great. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Kathy. Hello, everyone. Sorry, just getting my notes. <laughs> Um, so I wanted to start by talking about the professional development that our educators engaged in on election day. Uh, you might recall that during the two in-service weeks that preceded the start of school, a professor from Lesley University, Leah Howe, uh, presented in each of the three schools on understanding and addressing pandemic-related trauma. So she, um, she came back and partnered with a woman named Erica Johnson, who is a professor at Case Western Reserve University. It was a follow-up presentation and it looked at the interrelationship of COVID-19 and trauma and also racial identity. Uh, their intent was to raise awareness of how the interrelationship of those three factors can impact our students um, and especially our students of color. Um, and after that two hour presentation, the educators met in small groups to debrief um, and to talk specifically about what they can do um, to help our students understand and, and navigate trauma and especially uh, race-based trauma uh, with uh, outstanding professional development, very well received by our staff. Um, and the uh, I think people felt that the, the time spent in the small groups was, was really worthwhile as well. And for more information, um, I encourage you to check out uh, Jonathan Werner's um, article um, on that professional development. It's been posted to the website. Um, he is not only the middle school tech integrator, but also one of the co-advisors for the middle school civil rights team. So it's of particular interest to him and he, did, he, he, he wrote an excellent summary. So secondly, I wanted to uh, mention that the identification process that was postponed last spring for gifted and, our gifted and talented services um, has been completed. And the teacher, uh, Mr. Jean Petruzzi, uh, is in the process of notifying families of students who were, who were identified. Um, I, I, actually, he's not, notifying the families of students who were, who were screened either way. So, families will hear. Um, and if you have any questions about that process, I encourage you to contact him or me or either Mr. Mangeridis or Mr. Eastman. 
And finally, I want to let you know that I am beginning to post curriculum information to our newish website. Um, if you go to the um, teaching and learning section on the school department menu, um, under K-12 curriculum, you'll see um, all of the learning targets for every course at the middle school. And I'll be posting the learning targets for Pond Cove um, by the end of the week. Um, and I wanna be clear um, for those of you who do take a look um, that these are learning goals for students in a non-pandemic year, um, that this year students may not be assessed on all of those learning targets, but they are all guiding um, our instruction. And if you have any questions about any of that, again, please contact me. That's it. Any questions? Thank you, Kathy. Dell, you are up. Good evening. Um, I am going to stick with the same theme as far as the Wednesday piece. Um, and there will be a bit of redundancy, obviously, because my staff is Jason's staff, my staff is Troy's, and Jeff's staff as well. Um, but I did want you to get kind of a comprehensive picture with regard to special education assignments that uh, are taking place on Wednesdays. Um, the first thing I have on my list is testing students. So we do a lot of standardized testing in special education, and all that testing is done in person because doing it any other way would um, um, invalidate the standardization of the tests themselves. Um, so we have folks that are 100% remote, but they do receive special education services and still require testing and or are in referral for uh, special education. And sometimes those, uh, the staff will reach out and parents will feel comfortable enough given that Wednesday is essentially uh, no students and partially empty buildings that they're comfortable enough to bring those students in for testing on Wednesdays. So some, some students are coming in for testing on those days, you know, as long as it works out for the parents and that they're comfortable with that. Uh, staff are already also writing up evaluations and reports um, from those testing. Um, there's also interventions. So AM, uh, the mornings are open to interventions in the sense that um, staff are trying to fulfill all student IEPs in their entirety. And in order to do that require, some of them require that they book and schedule Wednesday mornings for remote instruction of those students. And when I'm talking about services, of course I'm talking about uh, I'm at academic, um, but also related services. So social work, um, um, speech and language, occupational therapy, physical therapy, uh, yeah. And um, so any of them may also be um, scheduling students on those mornings. Um, they also, uh, each building has a special education team meetings on Wednesdays. Not, some of them are not every Wednesday, but Wednesday, again, they're accessing Wednesday because they're not uh, interrupting student service time, which given that we're trying to basically fulfill five days of IEPs in four and a half days, um, they, um, they're trying to keep that piece sacred. And the other big, big piece that we have is the IEP meetings that I believe was mentioned by all three principals because we're having IEP meetings across the district on Wednesdays. And just so you know, uh, an IEP meeting requires a team of regular educators, a special education teacher, um, an administrator, as well as any of the related service providers. So one IEP meeting could be anywhere from um, six to 10 to 12 staff members. So those meetings do um, take up quite a bit of time for not just special ed, but for regular education as well. And of course, um, uh, the administrator's time as well. And I think that's all I had. Um, I did um, recently um, 
attend virtually attend the uh, educational and cultural affairs committee meeting that went on and um, they were looking at again revisiting the child development service services of the students uh, the three-year-olds and the four-year-olds as whether or not they would become the responsibility of public education or the public schools um, they look they they talked about three and four-year-olds, and then they talked about just four-year-olds. They are still, from what I could tell, still at the point of gathering information, not just on um, how this would look, uh, how it would work out, would it uh, meet least restrictive environment standards, uh, how would the funding work, um, and Senator Millette was running that meeting. So she, uh, Cape Elizabeth, uh, came up and because uh, one of the mention one of the mentions was about following the EPS formula and how um, she pointed out that that would mean that eight percent of the cost of those additional students would be funded by the school and uh, that that is not something that uh, she's uh, in favor of so um, I will keep you updated as I hear more obviously they're going to be having more meetings um, they also, there was there was also discussion of whether or not you know should these students should CDS fall under uh, DOE or should they perhaps fall under DHS and so there's a lot of questions that need to be answered and so uh, they're also working with a consulting group um, to figure the to to come up with these answers. Uh, any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Dal. And thank you for filling us in on that end piece to let us know that that is still in the conversation. Appreciate it. Donna. So as I said, we have, um, the administrative team has taken the time in the end of October, beginning of November to do some reflection on um, our programming so far this year, things that are working, um, things that, um, we might want to change um, just looking at lots of data. Um, so I'm going to try to share my screen. We did um, administer a parent survey. And I wanted to share. The results. OK, so we asked um, four main questions. Can everybody see that? Yes. Okay, good. Um, so the, actually they weren't, they weren't questions, they, we, they were statements and um, they had to say, pe uh, parents had to say whether they agreed, uh, strongly agreed, um, disagreed, strongly disagreed. So uh, the first statement was, I'm satisfied with the safety precautions and protocol that have been implemented in the schools during the 2020-2021 school year. This was um, very satisfying, the, the, um, the survey results. It seems that people are recognizing that um, our uh, procedures and protocols, we've worked hard on those and um, our uh, pretty satisfied. If you look at the um, strongly agreed and agreed, uh, it's a very large percentage, over 90, um, 96% were uh, satisfied. So that was good news. Uh, another comment was, I've been satisfied with the quality of my students' academic experience in the 2020-21 school year. We had asked this question in the spring and um, realizing that it was an emergency situation. Um, we're pleased that um, more people were satisfied. We did get, we had, an, um, we gave an opportunity for people to, uh, to make comments. And there were a lot of comments that said, we want our students back in school full time. And we do too, but we just can't do that right now. So, um, uh, but we did have a um, almost 70% uh, agreed or strongly agreed that um, they were satisfied uh, with their academic experience. So we felt good about that. And I'm trying to... Uh, 
on my screen, everybody's in the way of the, the comments, but I'll read them. Okay, so the next one was the amount of work my student has been assigned during the 2020-21 school year is too much, too little, just right. And so you can see um, that a lot of parents thought that it was just a, uh, just uh, the right amount of schoolwork. Um, some felt it was too little and some felt uh, it was too much. Um, so that was good feedback. And then uh, the last comment was um, administrators and staff have communicated with parents effectively during the 2020-21 school year. And 85.5% of parents uh, and, and um, guardians strongly agreed and agreed. Um, with that comment. So um, we felt very positive. That was, um, we looked at those data pieces um, as we were reflecting on the year and we, we felt very positive um, about the comments that were made. Um, does anybody want to ask any questions or make any comments on that before I take it away? And I can't see anybody. So if there is a board member, just go ahead and speak up. Okay, you have that. Um, that's this is posted, and it's also uh, it's it's posted as supporting document. So you do have that if you want to go back and look at it. Um, again, parents also have the the opportunity to make comments, and we we all really do want our students back in school full time, and we can't wait until that happens. But right now. Um, with the, the uh, limitations that we have and um, the, the six um, pieces that we have to comply with, uh, with the Department of Education and the CDC, um, we, we just can't do that. And I think people understand that um, and are appreciate, appreciative of all the safety precautions that we have in, in, put in place. Um, as we look just back, can I just, are, were you about to move on? It sounded like you were going to move on. Nasser looks like he has a question that I didn't see before. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is that I all right just, to interrupt? Yeah, I just uh, raised my hand. I'm sorry. So the the pie charts questionnaire we saw, were those some to both students and the parents or only one? And how many people responded in total? Uh, they were just sent to parents and guardians. I don't have the number in front of me of the number of people that responded, but I can certainly get that for you. We had a, quite a good response, so. Uh, so do you think that something similar will be sent to the students as well, or are you only interested from the parents? How are the academics? Well, we didn't send it to students, but we certainly could do that. Yeah, for yeah. students will be a little bit different than parents, you know, their perspective is more important and then from them, we will uh, will ask an open-ended question: How they can actually improve the existing system if there's any improvements necessary? Thanks, Nasser. We will do that. Um, so, so doing our ref our reflecting, um, we found that there were some things that maybe we could have um, done a little better. Um, one, one of the things was looking at the calendar. I know we had several comments um, from parents um, on when we have weeks that are four day weeks, um, why did we still have the Wednesdays and couldn't we have just taken that Wednesday out? You've heard uh, how important the Wednesdays are. Was well, one of the things we talked about over the summer was the need for consistency. Um, parents of young children have childcare issues. And if we were bouncing our um, our kind of our Wednesday day um, back and forth throughout the week to, to match the holidays that would really um, be a challenge for parents who had childcare. Um, plus you, you can see how we have been um, using those Wednesdays. They, they've just been very important. So um, another comment was about the parent conferences and we should have planned that better for having them on Wednesdays um, and using that day. Um, and again, um, you know, may, if we had had time and that had been our priority at the time, we probably would have looked at that more. 
um, as we move forward into second semester, um, we may look at the calendar and see if we can, uh, if we need to make any uh, changes there. But um, but we did have a lot of four day weeks, and um, I think everybody made it through okay. So. Uh, but if we had to do it another year, not saying we want to do it another year, but if we had to do it another year, um, we might we might look differently at the calendar as far as those four day weeks. Although I think we use, and you've heard tonight that we have been using uh, Wednesday as well. Uh, we are currently working on uh, preparing for snow and emergency days. And we've decided to move into remote learning for students who are scheduled for attendance in school should we have an, a, a remote um, uh, need to have a remote day for weather. And Joey, you can tell your um, the rest of your students over there that we uh, we do have a piece in there that if there is a problem uh, with um, connectivity on a day or power outages that we will just call that as a snow day, a weather day and move that to the end of the year. So um, teachers are really concerned about that too. Um, because they won't be able to teach if there's a um, if there's not any uh, power or if we're pro having problems with internet connections. So um, we we did think about that and we will take that into consideration. So Elizabeth, do you have a question about that? I just wanted to quickly follow up that it could be there are certain neighborhoods in town that are notorious for having um, poor internet connection, especially when there's weather. So it might not even be widespread. And so what I've heard through the grapevine from students, especially at the high school is number one, um, they're really conscientious students. They're worried about missing their work and missing a, a school day. So hopefully you can put them at ease that, you know, the, I, I know our teachers, they don't always know that teachers aren't going to hold it against them if they literally can't get on the internet, yeah. even if it's, not widespread throughout the town and I'm just making assumptions but when, when I when I talk with um, Jay Reynolds um, in the morning about the road conditions and those types of things um, one of the things we'll talk about is um, internet availability and, and power outages so that that will be added to our conversation um, hopefully we can makes more of these decisions the day before so that um, people know if weather is coming, we'll just switch automatically to remote learning and, and people will need to know, students and teachers will need to know that they need to take their materials home that day uh, for the next day. Um, one of the pieces that's different with the nutrition program this year is that it's always been that we have to feed students and watch them eat uh, I guess to make sure that the food is actually going in in order to count it for a school day. Um, but they've waived those requirements, but we will be supplying, um, um, Peter has ordered some lunch packs, some food packs um, to send home with students. Uh, so they should have those, they'll probably have a little supply of those at home that they can um, go into when um, we should have a weather day. So they, they should have, food at home. Um, so he's, he's in the, he was in the process of boarding those a couple weeks ago. I imagine that they've come, um, come now. So, uh, you know, this will be something that we've never done before. So we may need to try it and make some adjust, adjustments. Uh, but that way we're trying to um, keep learning consistent and um, instruction consistent for our students. Um, by not having a, just a, a snow day off. So um, one of the things that some um, Pond Cove uh, parents, students and teachers have asked about is um, having morning and afternoon sessions. And we talked about that in the summer, um, if that was a possibility and because of cleaning and because of the, the um, makeup of our bus driving staff, we just could not handle that. I talked to Perry again this week about it to see if um, with people being in um, more, having gone through their schedules and um, 
being more familiar with, with what was going on, if it would be a possibility now. And he still said, no, it, we just cannot handle the increased bus runs. So um, looking at that, it looks like that is just not a possibility at this point um, for, for several reasons, most of them having to do with our um, our full-time bus drivers being custodians uh, and using them as custodians, so then we wouldn't be able to clean. Um, our part-time bus drivers, some of them um, are limited as to the number of hours that they can work, and, and some of them are working part-time. And um, as we know, bus drivers are at a premium in Maine, so we can't go out and hire more bus drivers. So um, we, we do have, that's one of our limitations that we just have to work with as a district. Elizabeth, did you have? I'm just taking the opportunity to, to pass on everything I'm hearing in the community right now. <laughs> that was a big topic that you just um, touched on. And um, do you think, or, or do you think you could talk to the A-team? Would it be worth um, talking to parents one more time and saying, hey, if you can you know, increase your transportation, you know, that might have an impact on our ability to do this because it sounds like that's a, and it has been all along. This is not new. Every time, you know, someone brings it up, I know what to say. This was thought about and talked about quite a lot in the summer and again in the fall. But I wonder if people, you know, if people are just said, we, there's a possibility we could consider this if you know, we really took the burden off the bus drivers because we have so many bus drivers that are custodians. I don't know if that's a- Yeah, uh, Perry and I talked about that and he just does not think that we can do it. <laughs> He's, he, he just doesn't think it's possible, so. Um, yeah, uh, I, just, I got a question related to Elizabeth's question. Uh, you can't necessarily ask all parents, right? you really have to anal analyze your routes and how many students are on that bus. And based on that, you ask those parents or those neighborhoods if there is a possibility. Um, so again, we've talked about it in depth at least twice. And um, we just we just can't handle it at this point with, with our, our busing staff. So um, as Nasser said, it, it's hugely complicated as far as bus runs go. Um, and if we're going to do it, we would be obligated uh, by law to provide transportation. So um, we just at this point um, can't do it. So we'll continue. Um, Jeff's talked about some, uh, some changes that you know, that, that they've made with this um, uh, tagging, claiming students. Well, will we continue as we, um, as we work through the first semester and get into the second semester, um, continue to look at strengthening our, our ac academic programs. Um, our recommendation is to keep the, the schedule in the second semester the same as the first semester. Um, Again, the mini term um, was a huge discussion point um, about you know, the time for academic learning, but with the situation we had with the, the COVID students at the high school, um, we really saw the payoff for that because while other schools are dealing with um, hundreds of students in quarantine and 20 to 30 staff members in quarantine and having to close school because of that, we had minimal impact um, because of, of that many, um, many terms. So uh, it, really, it really did pay off. Um, we are asking parents um, if they would want to change their students' programming. If so, if they, their students are in hybrid and they want to change them to remote or remote to hybrid, uh, to try to let the principals know by December 1st, that will impact our class configuration. So there will be some reworking to do if we have large amounts of students who want to, want to change. We won't be able to, to change on a dime um, at the end of January. We'll need to do some prep work for that in, in case we have to do some class configuration changes. So um, 
planning on having it, having the second semester look very similar to the first semester. Um, if people want to make changes, please please let your principals know um, by December first. Uh, Just want to again thank parents, staff, students for all of their efforts um, to date. Um, they've really paid off as far as keeping our, our schools open and that's our our main concern right now is keeping students safe and staff safe and keeping our schools open. Uh, we're entering the cold and flu season so it's going to be more challenging with people having symptoms um, with substitutes. So I just want to remind everybody to be cautious, wear your masks, wash your hands, and be especially aware of social distancing. Any, any other questions? Go ahead, Hope. Hi. Um, so with respect to um, Donna, the, the uh, parents who want to, families who want to change from remote to in-person or vice versa, is there a, um, will that be for that semester? And can you share what the, the dates are for that commitment period? I know the beginning yeah, of the year it was. It would be for the second semester, which I don't have the date in front of me, but I believe it's about the third week in January till the end of the school year, so. Okay, so just that second half of the year. Yeah. Yep. Kimberly. Thank you so much for that update. Um, all very useful information. Um, I've heard um, from several community members um, about um, really wanting to prioritize in-person learning. Um, so I appreciate that um, you're uh, intending to look, uh, revisit the calendar for the second half of the year, I think um, we perhaps could have done some different things for the first half had we um, not had so many other things to consider at the time. Um, I just wondered, um, I, I think the prioritizing safety at the high school is working um, wonderfully. And I was just curious if you have any information at this point, um, how the many sessions are impacting our kids um, academically or if it's too soon to have any data on that. I'll turn that over to Jeff. Um, so actually we had a conversation, Kimberly, about that issue um, a couple of weeks ago as a staff and we are gonna revisit that issue in, we have a faculty meeting in mid-December. And by that time we will have been midway through the repeat first mini term. Um, so we'll really be able to assess um, how much effort, extra effort it, ta it's, it takes teachers to get students back up to speed in the class that they haven't taken for several weeks. So it, it's, it's a little bit premature, but it's not too far off before. I think I, I, I could answer that question with a little more experience behind me, if that makes sense. Excellent, thank you so much. Are there any other questions from the board? Okay, well, very much appreciated all of those updates. Um, and I just wanted to post, because I have been advised that uh, it's helpful information for the public that there are five attendees tonight. Um, it is bounced back and forth between five and seven a few times. Uh, new business, may I have a motion please? Come on board members, come on. <laughs> Don't be shy. I have, I'm sorry, I, my agenda is on my phone and I'm using my phone for the meeting. Oh. I'm. I can second anything. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I move that we approve the minutes of the October 13th, 2020 regular school board meeting. I second that. That's not what I have. I've already voted on that. We've already done yeah. that. I'm sorry. See, new That's business. Okay. I move the new we business. 
I move we um, approve the following 2020-2021 uh, administrative personnel and ex extracurricular nominations as set forth in our packet. Second. Thank you, Hope. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, any questions? These are things like yearbook and student council, um, natural helpers, assistant speech coach, art club. Thank you to all those who are stepping up and taking on more responsibility in an already very, very busy year. So if there's no questions or comments, Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr? Yay. Phil Nassier? Nassier. Phil Saucier? <laughs> yay. Elizabeth Seifried? Yay. Nasser Shear? Yeah, don't get ahead of yourself. Come by and do it. <laughs> that's the first I heard. I heard last year, but not <laughs> not last year. <laughs> Yay! Oh, hope straw. Oh, when I Yay. Said and Laura is not here. Great. Um, next piece of new business is notification of retirement. Donna, do you want to mention it? Wait. That's not what I have on my agenda. Consideration to approve the school board statement is next. Okay, you're right. I tried to get the updated one and I printed the wrong one. So I may I have a motion. A motion. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to do motion. this and you said something else. I was trying to be good for you this time. Um, I move we approve the school board statement, which reads, the Cape Elizabeth School Board acknowledges that racism exists. We have observed of injustice around our country. We have listened to community members and students. We have heard their pain. We are responding to what we have heard and witnessed and what we are learning. The school board is dedicated to ensuring that all members of our educational community are treated with dignity and equity. As part of that commitment, we unequivocally affirm that Black Lives Matter and believe that racial discrimination and injustice are intolerable in any form. While we already have policies regarding anti-harassment, anti-discrimination and anti-bullying, we aspire to go beyond policy. We support the work that teachers and administrators have already begun. The school board will support efforts to broaden professional development, champion the work of the DEI, which is the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Task Force, and ultimately improve the culture and climate of our school community. This is our ongoing commitment. Okay. Are there any Second. questions? Or Thank you. Are there any questions or comments? I would like to just once again, thank the board um, for a really productive um, and fruitful conversation. I was very proud to be considered a member of the Cape Elizabeth School Board last week during that meeting um, and how we ended up with this statement. Not only am I proud of the statement that we created, but I'm proud of how we came about it and the work that we did together. Um, how collaborative it was and how, um, in my opinion, from the experience last week, how well supported it was by all, how we really worked as a team to come up with something where we were all feeling comfortable um, and something strong uh, and I think is very meaningful. So I just want to extend a, a deep sentiment of gratitude to all my board members. Um, I would also like to share that I read the draft in the last DEI meeting um, and um, it was very well received. I see Kathy smiling um, and I did receive a few thank yous personally afterwards from some of the members of the DEI task force saying thank you so much for that statement. So I just wanted to pass that along this evening. Okay. Are there any other comments? Seeing none, 
We'll try to vote with Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Liz Seyfries. Yay. Nasser Shear. Yay. Hope Straw. Yay. Great. And Laura is there. Um, so I am currently trying to find more updated agenda is next retirement. Another movement, Elizabeth. Yes, it's the notifications. Donna, yeah. can you speak to that about the retirement? Well, Arlene is retiring. <laughs> we're, we're very sad, but um, our uh, <laughs> human resources coordinator. Um, so she will be um, working until some point in January. And then we are, we started working on uh, a new um, job description and it is, um, we are advertising. So, but we're sad to see Arlene go. Yes. Do you happen to know how long she's been here? She has been, been here, here for it's 20, been a while. 20 years. Yeah. Well, good for her. Sad for us, good for her. <laughs> Definitely. Um, and so then, trying to pull this up, my internet is slow, is the next item, second readings of policy. Are we on policies now? Yes. 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 We have to approve. Okay. So Hope, I'm going to let you, yeah. Sure. A motion um, then. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay. So I move we approve um, after our second reading policy ACAD hazing. Um, we sh I think we should do these each individually. Yeah. Can I get a second and then maybe you can explain it a little bit more? Second. Do I have a second? Thank you, Elizabeth. Go ahead, Ho. Do you want to? Um, yep. So ACAD, sure. Um, so these were some uh, updates that were made um, that they're sort of annual uh, reviews done um, to update it to align with the statutes. And it's it doesn't have sort of a, a material change with respect to its impact, but it refined, um, we re refined the definition of hazing to align with the main statute and then removed some uh, other language that sort of strayed from the, the, the confines of the statutory definition. Uh, we received no uh, further input or comments at the last policy meeting or uh, since the last board meeting. So I think we're ready to move ahead with approving the policy. Okay, are there any other questions or comments? Uh, Beginning with the vote, Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seyfries. Yay. Nasser Shear. Yay. Hope Straw. Yay. And may I have a motion for the next policy? I move we uh, vote to approve policy updates to policy J-I-C-K, which is our bullying and cyberbullying prevention in schools policy. Second. No, second. Thank you, Elizabeth. Is there more to say to that? Oh. Um, sure, so this one, again, it's uh, there were no changes or comments since the last meeting, um, but the updates to the policy are, um, again, not really changing the material impact of the policy or the procedure, but the, um, the reporting, the process for reporting, um, our response requirements have been pulled from the from the procedure into the policy itself, likely to make it easier for an individual who is looking for that information to find it uh, on the face of the policy. Uh, it's, it's somewhat not typical, but I can understand why that's a suggested change. Um, 
so that's the update. Um, and like I said, we didn't have any of the further comments from the public or the board since the last meeting. So we're ready to move forward with the approval. Great. Any questions or comments? Heather Altenberg, yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Nasser Shear. Yay. Hope Straw. Yay. Um, and next, it's the procedure. Hope, would you like to speak to that? Um, so that's the um, that's the procedure attached to the one we just approved. The the board doesn't vote on the procedure, but ultimately it's 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 been modified by pulling. Like I said, it pulls some of the details from the procedure into the policy itself. Yeah. So we don't have to vote on that piece. The next piece, um, the next motion is to approve IJ and DB which is our student computer and internet use policy. Okay. And on this one, um, it's been updated to reflect current terminology. So taking out iPads, um, iPods and replacing that with um, tablets. Um, it also, we also removed some language that um, we had some language that had, had requirements for um, seeking approval from the technology department for downloading software. And it's just not something that's, that's required or feasible. Uh, so we kind of aligned it with our actual practices. Um, and that one also has the policy associated with, I'm sorry, the, the procedure associated, which, it was, which we're not voting on right now. Um, it's just in the packet for your reference. Um, and there were no comments or um, input since the last meeting on that. So we're moving to approve the updated version that we have in our packet today. Okay. Questions or comments? Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier? Yay. Elizabeth Seifries? Yay. Nasser Shear? Yay. And Hope Straw? Yay. Lori Delino is not here today. So the procedure you just spoke to yep. for that one. Next and is a first reading. Yep. So lastly, we have a first reading policy GC. MA, which is a new policy, and this is instructional staff planning time. Um, this is one, um, what you're finding in the packet is a, um, is sort of the first, first proposed draft of this policy. This is something, um, it's been a topic of conversation for several years. Um, as some board members will recall, um, it, it, it came in and out of the policy discussion uh, without an actual policy resulting, but at this time uh, it's uh, the opinion of the committee um, that it's an appropriate time to have a policy in place to just sort of reflect what the board believes in terms of supporting uh, teacher planning time. Um, like I said, this is, this is our, our, our starting point. Um, it's, a, it's a very, um, it's pretty concise. <laughs> Um, and we'd like to invite uh, comments or input uh, on this for discussion at the next meeting. Okay. Thank you for that. Next on the agenda is school board agenda requests. Are there any? And committee reports. Um, it starts with paths, and there was a meeting a little while ago. Um, I'm not sure that Nasser was there, but I attended, and it was basically just a follow-up, like a, a filling us in on, it was the first 
we'd had this year. Um, and just talking about their programming and how most of it is is moving through um, and that they're, they're pleased with how things are going at this point. Policy, do you have more to say, Hope? in round policy or do you feel complete? Uh, that's that's it so far, other than we're gonna be back in um, the meeting in November 24th to talk about GCMA and then also hopefully the, the cell phone policy will also be on the agenda at that meeting. Okay, thank you. Um, and then the DEI um, task force, I was, I attended the professional development and I think the, that um, Kathy was mentioning earlier in her report. Um, and I thought it was fabulous and uh, very educational. And the conversations um, continued in our DEI task force meeting. Um, and I think the, the teachers found it very valuable. Um, I, I did get the message that there is a wide range of comfort level from the teachers here in Cape Elizabeth about facing this topic and about um, uh, bringing it into the classroom and how to handle situations and how to talk to students about it. So there was a little bit of conversation around that after, um, am I correct about this, Kathy? Because I didn't participate in this piece, but there was the two hour presentation and then there were these mini groups um, that were led by DES task force members. And so there, there was follow up. And so we were just having conversations around what was happening in some of those um, smaller groups. Um, is that, was that correct? Yeah, actually I wanted the, um, the representatives, the school-based representatives to the DEI task force planned the, um, the debrief, which occurred, um, it was school-based um, and, um, and, uh, the faculty were divided into small groups, but um, but the facilitation was shared. Um, so the task okay. force members did the planning, but um, but but not necessarily the facilitation. And okay. I should mention too that there was in each school some contextualization, um, an attempt to um, uh, talk about. Um, you know, what we've heard from students as to why we're doing this. And um, I don't know if any of the principals want to speak to that. I, um, but anyway, <clears throat> otherwise, yes, I think spot on. Yeah, thank you. So, and we have another meeting coming up and the work continues. The school building committee, we also met. Um, and basically what we did was sort of refresh our minds about what we, um, how we ended back in the spring. Um, and we had been brought as a committee, we had been brought four options, potential options of how to move forward with a building project. Um, and through the discussion of the meeting, we did decide to take away one of the options. Um, and so we're down to three, which, um, will bring us into our next meeting, how to deliberate and work through and try to whittle it down to something that we're hoping to bring to the board by December with any hope for our next meeting. So we'll see how that goes. Announcements of upcoming meetings, the DEI task force. Uh, Heather? Yep. Yes. Yes. Who has to report out on the resolutions? Oh, thank you. I must have the old one. Go ahead, Phil. Sorry about that. Thank you, um, Phil. Yeah, not a problem. So I attended a couple weeks ago now the uh, School Board Association annual conference, the Delegate Assembly, and um, to uh, to review and vote on the resolutions that I, that we went over last time, and we all voted to support them. Um, just very briefly, briefly they were. Um, Four, I'm not going to read them, just the titles. Development of Distance Learning Plan, Building Stronger Family, Support for Education, Equity in Education, and Board Meeting Remote Participation. And they all passed. I will say it was one of the longest meetings I've ever been part of. They typically only take one to two hours. It was five and a half hours. It started at 3.30 and didn't get out until almost not close to nine, quarter nine. Um, uh, part of that was the remote issue. 
There were a lot of amendments, proposed amendments, and every time they had an amendment, they had to create a a uh, question that then they would take ten minutes to to do, and then they have to send us a link to vote. It was just it was a little excruciating, quite frankly, but it's a good process. Uh, uh, a lot of amendments. The only two I want to report on is a lot of them failed, but there were two that that passed, and that was in the equity in education. Um, one amendment was to add. Um, these are two separate amendments that are combined to add age or economic status, age and or economic status to the list of students um, that deserve equitable opportunities to the list that were in the originally proposed. Um, and then at the end, um, a clause uh, that the main DOE should provide support for the purpose of um, school district leaders facilitating, facilitating a self-examination discussion recognizing bias and stereotype, stereotyping and adopt policies and practices. That was a, there was one district in particular that wanted essentially funding for each of these um, added to the statement. This is one of the areas where it was, the delegates voted to add that. So to, to add funding from the state to help with this kind of programming. Um, but otherwise that's it. So we, we did support them and they were, they're now resolutions of the main school board association with those two amendments. And that's the report. Thank you for that. Sorry, it was so long. The next meetings coming up, the DEI task force is November 18th at 3.30 via Zoom. Policy committee, as Hope mentioned, is November 24th at three via Zoom. Our next building committee is actually taking the place of our next workshop, which is November 24th at 6.30 via Zoom. It sort of is in line with the idea that the school board has decided to use our workshops to deal with goals, strategic plan and school board goals. And since the building committee is one of those, we decided to use that workshop uh, for that purpose. Um, we'll be combined this month. There we go. And before we get to our final motion, uh, this is the last uh, regular business meeting for two of our board members. Um, and it uh, is typical to, to say goodbye to them through a few words. And I'd like us to start with Nasser. Are there any board members who have anything that they would like to say? I have something, but I will end. If anybody could raise your hand. Kimberly. Nasser, I am going to miss having you on the board. I love um, I love hearing your your voice and your laughter. Um, you are consistently um, supporting and caring for our students. Um, your warmth um, and inclusivity comes through in all your statements. And I have so appreciated your passionate energy and, and big heart that you have brought to the board. So thank you so, so much. And I'll miss having you with us. Thank you, Kimberly. Anyone else? Yeah, I just like to say, I you know, I've only served with Nasser for one year, but I've learned a lot from him, and I've really appreciated all the all of his comments in each and every meeting. It always opened my eyes to to ways of thinking about the issue that I hadn't thought of. So my only uh, my only regret is that we don't get to serve together longer, uh, but hopefully we'll cross paths in other endeavors. So thanks, Nasser, for for uh, the opportunity to serve with you. Thank you, Phil. Elizabeth. So Nasser, it seems like somehow we we just we develop this relationship where we really understand each other. And I feel like I was always on the lookout for the gems that you were imparting to the board and making sure that they were really heard because you did really bring us a lot of gems. Um, I'm I really am going to miss your perspective and the input that you brought, especially working um, in Portland and um, the just the variety of perspectives you you gave us. And I also want to thank you. You were always very student centered 
in um, how you approached your work and um, it, it really helped refocus us. So thank you and I'm gonna miss working with you. So though I've known Nasser for a long time through my husband Garth, they were counselors at Chiwanki together. I've appreciated getting to know you better as a co-member, a co-board member. You have added levity to our meetings. Earlier today when I misspoke in Phil's name and those little gems are some of the gems that I think Elizabeth are talking, is talking about. You add that levity to our meetings and you always seem to know the right time to get us to laugh and regain perspective. You have served on policy committee, technology committee and past committee, but most importantly, you've added a perspective that is unique to any of ours during these three years on the board. You have challenged us to think harder and look more deeply at Cape Elizabeth schools and how we treat each other. You can be raw sometimes in the questions that you ask. You can, you know, have us look at ourselves and we, it becomes really honest, but that's needed and necessary. So thank you for that. I hope that as we continue to move forward and continue to support the work of the DEI task force and hopefully make an impact and lasting change of the inclusion of the people of color in Cape Elizabeth schools that we can make you proud. I know that you're not done with your public service. You've already begun working, I believe, with USM. Is that correct? You've already started that work with equity and inclusion, and you'll bring your wisdom to that institution as well. They're lucky to have you, as we were very lucky to have you for three years. So thank you for all you brought to the Cape Elizabeth School Board, to the Cape Elizabeth School District, and thank you so much for your heartfelt contributions. Very deeply appreciate it. Good luck. Uh, thank you very much. I wasn't aware that uh, I had to give a speech. <laughs> and uh, You don't have to, but you can. I, yeah. <laughs> As you know, uh, it's my perspective is usually a different perspective, just geographically, because I'm a geographer. I have to advertise for geography. So just because of geography, I bring a, a different uh, vision. It doesn't mean I'm a smart, it doesn't mean I'm wicked, it doesn't mean I'm intelligent. It just means I have a different perspective. I've seen things differently. So with that said, uh, due to my, I, I pride on my religion and, and culture, uh, and due to my religion and culture, uh, there's a lot of things that we, we do that's very different than the Western society. And one is that you, I do not necessarily have to boast about you in front of you. If I have something good to say about you, it's gonna be always behind your back. Not right now, but just since this is a goodbye, um, I'll try to say a couple of good words about each of you. Uh, but I've enjoyed my time. I've learned a lot, a lot a lot. So uh, it was, I was more in for me than me providing to you guys, but I'm glad that we've, we should learn a lot from one another. And um, so if it wasn't for the board, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have gone to USM to board of visitors. So my resume says that I served in Cape Elizabeth School District, one of the best districts in the state of Maine. So Heather, yes, I do know you. I, even though I probably haven't met you off the school board. And the thing is that I remember I have to say a couple of things, not a lot. Is I thought I knew Garth very well because he's been a friend and we pretty much slept in the same cabin, stayed in summer, long time. We know a lot about each other. But fortunately or unfortunately, I told Garth that I'm sorry, I, I no longer know you, but I know Heather now. <laughs> Because I've spent a lot of times with you, more times on the board meetings, and more interaction, more emails, and so forth. Just give them that news. Say, sorry, your buddy's lost. <laughs> um, 
as far as hope goes, I'm going to zoom so I can see her. The only thing, I'm not, I know there's a lot of great stuff to say, but I hope I'm not going to say in front of your face, it's going to be behind your back. But I wish, I just wished, and it was my hope to have a dinner with you at your house with your, with your husband. And I just listen in and I don't talk. And the, <laughs> and the conversation, the intelligence and the arguments that I will gain. And uh, I just had vision of that. And hopefully someday when this pandemic is all over, we can do that. I have great respect for your husband and for you. And uh, you guys are inspiration to the community. And uh, I hopefully you will continue on uh, when you leave this, continue with other means and other ways to do this. Uh, Phil, you bring the question that others have hard time asking. And as you know, I don't have hard time asking. I ask 10 questions. I don't think about it. Out of the 10 questions, one might be great, five may be stupid, and the other one is like, where did that come from? But I ask the questions, right? So how else, otherwise you're gonna just hide it in there uh, and never be heard. So you have brought that perspective. And more importantly, maybe because of your law degree, you bring us, remind us, hey, by the way, we need to do it this according to this rules. And you have that perspective. And, um, and thank you for joining the board. Hopefully you will continue on the board longer than, than me. Uh, Elizabeth, as you stated beautifully, there are interpreters, there are translators, and then there are mind readers. Elizabeth is my mind reader. And uh, I don't have to speak, I don't have to say anything. She just reads my face or she gets into my head, I'm not sure which one it is. Uh, but we do think alike, maybe that's why. Maybe we have the same perspective, maybe that's why or maybe just work with more, many more foreigners and you know what they think like. So I enjoyed your, uh, your uh, reading about my mind. And the more than that, from the first day when we were hiring Donna, I made a huge mistake and only you know that Elizabeth, I made a huge mistake and immediately you corrected me. And that's where I have earned my uh, value for you. I said, okay, this person is gonna be correcting me uh, and, 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 be, and be show me the ropes. And as you know, I wasn't offended and I was happy to learn that and, and, uh, and did not continue to make more mistakes. I'm sure I have made more mistakes, but anyhow, it was a joy to have uh, to be on a board with you and to learn under your wing. Um, Laura is not here, but I guess she can watch it. Uh, uh, she brings a, an awesome uh, perspective, uh, a different perspective. Like Phil, uh, she does ask questions that are uh, unimaginable. And uh, as you guys saw her at the last meeting, uh, she beautifully brought the words together, was brave enough to open up her computer and uh, focus us in one direction and get it done. And she's about rolling her sleeves and getting done. Uh, Kimberly, uh, I, I I thought uh, my wife is not here. I thought I had a lot of respect for my wife, but I think you uh, uh, you blown her out of the water. You you are a mother. You have five daughters, and uh, uh, you are on the school board. You sure have a full time job, and yet uh, you have that enthusiasm and the energy that you bring to the board is just unthinkable. And I think I might have said more than two words for each one. I think I'm breaking my own rules. Uh, I don't know who's left. Uh, is anyone left? I think we got everybody. Donna we got is everyone. Donna, I have to say <laughs> just one thing for Donna is that my kid is eight years old. He's in second grade. Please be around till he graduates high school. <laughs> that, that, just, <laughs> that just tells you. Uh, that just tells you everything. I mean, that's how much I'm happy Thank you, Nasser. for you. And I want you to stay as long as, as that possible. <laughs> and um, 
I'll just put all our principles in the demonstration all in one category. Um, this is very, very wonderful to hear from the, I'm, I'm seeing Mr. Shedway. Uh, he's been around for a long, long time. He's seen my families, my cousins, my nephews and brother, and uh, hopefully he doesn't get to see my grandkids <laughs> in the school environment. <laughs> And um, so it's been a great pleasure to see you from different perspective as a principal, as a colleague working together. I have so much hope, Mr. Shared, and I think uh, I will volunteer to be on your team of uh, no, no student left behind. Oh, there was one group that make sure there's no dropouts. And uh, I was getting very eager and uh, you probably saw my enthusiasm there. And uh, if you if ever comes an opportunity, get me involved in there so I can work with you. Uh, that's and uh, just for the, the new new principles. I'm sorry I do not know as well as Mr. Shed, <laughs> uh, but but you guys doing a great job, um, Mr. Uh, just, just an awesome job for when it comes to the fact that you guys have more or less learned while I was there. You guys came when I was a, a board member and the progress here you guys have made in reference to presentations, in reference to bringing information, in reference to learning from one another, and more importantly, in reference to listening to the parents. And so, I have seen your, uh, your presentation skills and the facts in, that you bring and the problems you solve is just instrumental. instrumental. And uh, it, it, I will applaud you for, for that. And uh, so I think uh, that's a, a long goodbye. I'll just stop right here. <laughs> <laughs> Nasser, thank you so much. I think you just exemplified one of the main reasons you will be missed from so many people. Thank you for that. Very thoughtful and sweet. We are also losing hope, which is so sad. Is there any comment from board members? Are there any comments? Uh, Kimberly, I don't know if your hand is raised new or old, but I'm gonna call on you. I, I probably never put it down, but I would have put it back up. So. Um, hope I have loved serving with you. I, um, I, I feel like, um, you're sort of the tree of the board. You are, um, I, you bend with whatever comes your way, but you are, um, you are steady and, um, and calm and very grounded. Um, I love frequently you bring us back to, um, reflect on what our role as the board really is or what the board can actually oversee or do, um, which is always very helpful. Um, your um, care and thoroughness um, on the negotiations um, was, was very helpful, I, so thoughtful and caring for, um, for all involved in the process. Um, yeah, I, I will miss you. And, and I love every now and then there's, there's like a great laugh that, um, that you share with us as well. So, thank you for being with us and I'm gonna miss you and hopefully we'll still see you through the, through the girls. Thank you, Kimberly. Anyone else? Elizabeth. So this is this is the evening that I kind of hoped wouldn't happen right now, but it's happening. And so I'm allowed to say how sad I am about it. I have had the privilege of working with Hope in um, the major areas of my um, school board involvement have also been Hope's. And so I have gotten to witness what 
an incredible um, gift she has been to the board. Um, as policy chair, she's been outstanding. And I think, you know, the work that she's put into what felt like year long policies and really sensitive discussion and how she managed legal interpretations along with um, comments and concerns from staff members, it was incredibly impressive. She sort of managed those things with a deft hand and she was, you know, just incredibly organized and incredibly prepared every single time. Um, the other place that I was um, lucky enough to work with Hope was in negotiations. And um, those are also, you know, delicate moments. And um, it, it, she brings knowledge and she brings skill, but she also brings humanity. And um, it was an absolute pleasure to get to work with her and, you know, get through negotiations and what felt very positive and come to a win-win, which isn't always the way school departments can do this. Um, I think at board meetings and retreats and that sort of thing, Hope, Hope has a nice blend of pragmatism along with optimism. And how do you blend those things together? I don't know, but it's, it's amazing. So um, I'll miss you. I hope that we can stay in contact somehow and um, good luck to you in your future Tuesday nights <laughs> and your Tuesday afternoons and your Mondays and all the other times that um, you gave up your time to this board. Thank you. Right. So it has been a pleasure having hope on the Cape Elizabeth School Board for the past three years. And Elizabeth just alluded to that. Some might say that her greatest contributions have been policy chair and a key part in negotiations. And no doubt I was not um, in the negotiations, um, but I see the results of all of the policy chair work. But contributions that you add are that I have expressed, uh, excuse me, that I have learned to expect and, and really, really count on your perspective conversations during our meetings are going to come to standing. I don't know, Kimberly said it, you're like a rock or a tree. You're very rounded, you're flexible, um, and adaptable. And during the budget process, you add to the conversation with so much clarity that just sort of gets to the point and the questions and sort of moves things around so that we can really get to the issue. And talking about the plan for opening schools this year, your comments and questions offered a friend view. Your questions are thoughtful and your attention to detail and to the work set before us. I think the most admirable part is the role on the board is how you never lose sight of the job. I've heard from you several times that you may feel one way, but as the role of the board, this is where decision-making comes from. And so you don't let your personal viewpoint from a family perspective get in the way of, of the work that you need to do for the movement forward with the board. Um, I am very sad that you're leaving. I have really deeply enjoyed having you here. Um, I only imagine how you are going off to celebrate after this. It's been intense, I'm sure, for your family. And so thank you so much for giving your heart and your soul these past three years. Thank you so much. Thank you, Heather. And um, I, like Nazar, I did not, although he came out with this eloquent whole speech, well, I don't really sure that he really wasn't prepared, but. <laughs> hope, um, uh, hope <laughs> uh, sorry to interrupt you, Phil. And I wanna say too, maybe Phil will go first. 
Yeah, keep going. I, I didn't get my hand up, but I do want to say something at the appropriate time. I okay. wasn't, uh, I want to make sure you weren't, people didn't think I was not going to say something. I think we'll let hope go last. So go ahead. Otherwise, I'll see Thank you. <laughs> thanks, Nasser. No, it's all right. Uh, to butt in. Um, but thanks, Nasser. No, I just thank you. I, it's hard for me to follow everyone else um, who, who knows you so much better. But it, I, I felt um, like I learned so much from uh, serving with you this year, particularly on the negotiations committee. Um, and I was, uh, that was a um, very meaningful experience for me to serve on that committee and, and to understand the work of working with our teachers. And I was always really impressed on how prepared you were. I like to think of myself as prepared, but um, there were lines in the contract and um, things to think about that I hadn't really fully gone down the path of yet. And so you, you'd always done that. Um, and it made me go back after each meeting to go dig a little bit further. Um, so I just, um, uh, we only served together for a year, but I really appreciated the time I did get to spend with you. Um, and so thank you. And sorry that I was pushed in the middle of your, your <laughs> goodbye there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I guess I will have to do more than a couple sentences now, Hope. There's a reason why, at least in my culture, parents choose a name for their baby to hopefully that name will inspire that person. So I do not know the story behind your name, but your name is beautiful and you do put a lot of hope into a lot of people's uh, hearts. And you did bring uh, a lot of uh, energy. Uh, as you know, one of the times that I was really pushing to be on a committee uh, for negotiation during that hard conversation we had, and that was you. I wanted to learn from you. I wanted to be there. I wanted to know what is it to be like. And that's why I was inviting myself to be at the dinner table between you and your husband. And uh, so I do have a great respect for you when it comes to that. And uh, more importantly, it's uh, difficult to hear that both your husband and you're both not running. So hopefully you're not running from Cape Elizabeth and uh, that we will see you again and elsewhere in the community and your involvement. So it was great serving you with you. Uh, I was really hoping that you'll stay longer than me, but We'll find out on an individual count. Is that, is that we'll find out at your dinner house, uh, table in your house why you're both left. <laughs> so there was there's an agenda for us already. It's great working with you. Thank you, Nazar. Um, and thank you everyone for the kind words. Um, I uh, just keep this very brief. The re the reason I volunteered to participate in the school board is that I wanted to, I, I think there's, despite my name, I have a lot of concern about things that go on in, in the world. And I think two of the things that are, or two of the things that I find hope in is that is, is public education and supporting public education. The other one is ranked choice voting, but that's another topic. Um, so I wanted to do my part in just whatever minuscule way I could to volunteer and help in this, uh, um, in the endeavor of supporting our schools. And um, in that process, I learned um, th about the um, sort of the incredible work that you all do. And I'm, I'm humbled by the amount of effort and devotion of the teachers and the administrators and Donna and I, um, I, I, I'm just, I feel fortunate that I had the ability to, to, to serve for the community and to, to play some small part in this, in this endeavor. Um, and I plan to continue to support it in whatever way I can. Um, Nazar, you know that Chris and, Chris and I are both rule followers. And now that we won't be serving, we won't be running afoul of the open meeting laws and we will be at your house at the next potluck. So <laughs> give us that invitation. Um, and Nazar, earlier on in this uh, process, you referred to Chris and I as the mother and the father. <laughs> really? I don't know how that happened, but, um, and I feel that now I, 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 would, I would love to stay and continue to, to, do, to do this work, but I feel like there's so many, so many talented and dedicated people that I feel like 
they're they're you're all in good hands and i don't my children can now <laughs> continue the work so at any rate thank you so much for your kind words everyone and thank you for the opportunity to serve thank you hope and nasser good luck as you move forward and uh does one of you want to make a motion a final motion I move we adjourn. Do we have a second? Nasser, want to second it? I second it. Excellent. Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Bill Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Cyphers. Yay. Nasser Shear. Yay. Hope Straw. Yay. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you so much. Good night.